Hey everyone, it's Tracy, and welcome to the first in a series of tutorials about editable text effects in Affinity Designer. In this one, we're going to create this non-destructive paper cut effect so that you can change the font, size, and the text itself, and the effect will always remain intact. Best of all, everything you need is already built into Designer. Now I'm using the desktop version of version two, but the process is the same for the iPad version so you can easily follow along. Let's get started. I've created a canvas at 3000 pixels set to 300 DPI just in case I want to print this. I can always export it at a smaller size later if I want. Now I'm gonna set the background texture first and I want to pull in this craft paper texture by Resource Boy. You can find it in the Pexels section of the Stock Studio. Now instead of dragging it in, I'm going to select my fill tool and tap on the texture. What that's going to do is change my fill color from that white to that craft paper texture. And next I'll grab my rectangle. I'm going to command click on my canvas. Now you can do this in the desktop version. Unfortunately, you can't do this in the iPad version. I already have a rectangle set here at 3000 pixels. So I'm just going to click OK and I'll center this up onto the canvas. What this is going to allow me to do is use the fill tool to adjust the texture, swap it out. I can move it around. It just gives me a little bit more versatility. So I'm going to lock this into place. And the next thing I want to do is add my text. I'll select my artistic text tool and start dragging out some text. Now I'm using the font impact. And the reason that I'm using this is because it's nice and thick and the paper cut effect shows up really nicely. So I'm just going to type out paper cut effect. And I think the size is good. I just want to center this up. Now I want to change this from black to the texture that I'm using in the background. I'm gonna use the fill tool again, again, so that I can easily adjust it. So with it selected, I'll go to the fill tool, go back to my stock studio, and I'm just going to click on that same texture. Now it's going to disappear because of course it's the same texture, but we're about to bring it back by adding some dimension using effects. I'm back in my Layers Studio and I'm going to select the text layer and head to my Layer Effects panel. The first effect that I want to add is an inner shadow. And before I add a shadow, I always want to decide which direction I want my light source to come from because you want all of your shadows to follow that. So I'm going to pretend as if my light source is coming from the left side, which means all of my shadows will go to the right. So I'll add my inner shadow and I'm going to start dragging the offset up pretty high. And I think I'm actually going to set this at 40. So I'll just key in 40. I'm going to change my radius to 45. So that's going to feather that. And I'm going to leave the opacity and intensity alone for now. The one final thing I want to change here is I want to set this to a brown color rather than black. So I'm just going to go to my colors here and I'll use my color picker to pick one of the darker browns in here. I'll go ahead and click that color dot to change it. Now that's a little too light. I have my HSL sliders up here. I'm just going to bring the luminosity down. So it's going to be pretty dark, but it's going to look a little bit better than black. The next effect that I want to add is a bevel emboss. So if I zoom in here, I have a shadow on this side and if there was light coming from the left, there would be a touch of highlight on any of my left facing parts here. So I'm going to click to add a bevel emboss and right now it's set to pillow and that's not what I want. I actually want to change this to outer. That's going to set the highlight so that it looks like it's sitting on top of this texture here. The only problem is the direction is wrong. Right now it's sitting on the left side, which is where my shadows are coming from. So if my shadows are coming from the left, I need the highlight to be on the right. So I'm going to head down to this color dot here. This is the azimuth and elevation. And this is going to tell designer where I want my highlight to sit. So I'm just going to drag this over and I'm gonna keep an eye on my highlight here. What I want is for it to be here on the left side of all of these little cutout parts. Now that I've done that, I'm going to go ahead and change this black to a brown as well. Because again, I want my shadows to be more of a brown color than black. And then I think I'm going to go back to my inner shadow and just adjust the intensity a little bit. One final effect that I want to add is I want this 
lettering to be slightly darker than the paper because if there was actual depth, there would be less light. So I'm going to click on color overlay. I don't want this to be black. Again, I want to sample the texture and I'll just pick sort of a brown color there. Bring this down and I'm going to change the blend mode to multiply. That's going to allow the texture to come through from the bottom and I'll just bring the opacity down. I don't want this to be too dark. I just want it to be slightly darker than the texture on the top. So let's just back up and take a look at everything and see if there's anything that needs to be adjusted. I think my highlights might be a little too intense. So I'm going to go back to my bevel and boss and bring the radius in a little bit. Now, because I've used fill layers to add my texture, I can easily use the fill tool to swap them out for another type of paper or really any type of texture. So I'll select my text layer here and go back to the stock studio. I wanna make sure I have my fill tool selected and I'll just click on this paper bag texture here. I can drag this back out if I feel like it's not quite where I want it. And I can move this around so that more of the wrinkles are showing. I can go back to my layer and select my original rectangle there and do the same thing. So I can change that as well, or I can change it to something completely different. Now, in addition to being able to change the texture, you can also change the text. This is fully editable. So I can just select this text layer, select my artistic text tool, and I can change what it says. In addition to changing what it says, I can select it and change the font. And if I find that the effects aren't quite working with the font that I selected, because these are non-destructive, I can select my text layer, go into the effects, and adjust them as necessary. All right, so let's quickly talk about saving this. So I could save this as an AF design file, and what that would do is save all of the layer history. But what I tend to do instead with something like this is I actually save it as a template because I don't need all of the layer history. I want to save it as is right now. The only difference with a template file is that you're not going to get that history. Otherwise, it's going to save all of your layers here. It's going to save all of the effects. What that's going to allow you to do is if I go up to File here and New, I can set up templates here in my opening screen. This is a folder that I have set to a cloud file, which means that I can pull this into both here on my desktop and my iPad. If I were to click on this one and create, it's going to open it up and you can see that all of my effects and all of my texture there, I can make the adjustments. And what this is, is a clean file. So it says untitled. It's left the template as is. So I can always go back and it's exactly as I created it. But if I make a change to this and save it, it's not touching that template file. So it's always there when I need it. And I can always adjust it for a totally new design. So what text effect would you like to see as part of the series? Can you see yourself using editable text effects in your own design? Let me know in the comments below. If you've enjoyed my teaching style and you'd like to check out my full length classes, I linked both my Skillshare classes and my own learning site, The Creator Collage, below. I have lots more tutorials coming, so be sure to subscribe. In the meantime, you might want to check out one of these two next. Thanks for watching.